Okay, so the last thing I want to cover here is how to draw an enantiomer. And this is useful in cases where your professor gives you one of the enantiomers, like the S enantiomer, and asks you to draw the other enantiomer, the R enantiomer. And this is really, really simple. All you have to do is draw the mirror image of a compound. So hey, let's take this last compound for example. This compound was the S enantiomer. Let's draw out the R enantiomer now just for kicks. All right, so let me go ahead and erase some of these rules so we can have room to draw this out. Okay, so I've gone ahead and just drawn out this compound again up here. And this was the S enantiomer. Now let's draw its mirror image, the R enantiomer, right next to it. So what you're going to do is draw a little imaginary plane in between these guys. So there's your imaginary plane. Here's the S enantiomer. Let's draw the R enantiomer right next to it. Okay, so after you draw your imaginary plane, then just draw these as if they were reflections of each other across that plane. Okay, so hey, this carbon has a chlorine going to the back and to the left. So the enantiomer will have a carbon with a chlorine going to the back but to the right. Next, we have an OH pointing to the front and to the left. So in the enantiomer, we're going to have an OH pointing to the front, but to the right, just like this. Next, we have a CH3 pointing to the right. So in the enantiomer, we're going to have a CH3 pointing to the left. And lastly, we have an ethyl group pointing straight up, so its mirror image will also have an ethyl group pointing straight up. So all we did was just take this compound and flip everything from right to left and left to right, and that gave us the mirror image. So here CH3 is going to the right, here CH3 is going to the left. Here an OH is going to the left, here an OH is going to the right. CL is going to the left, CL is going to the right. And hey, these both point straight up. All right, so, so far, we've been looking at compounds that only have one chiral center. But you can have compounds with multiple chiral centers. And when you have multiple chiral centers, that means you can have multiple stereoisomers within one compound, multiple places where a compound can be R or S. So hey, let's write some of this stuff down. So let me go ahead and just erase some of this stuff. Okay, so you guys know what enantiomers are. Now let's compare this to diastereomers. And so, enantiomers versus diastereomers. And beneath enantiomers, Go ahead and write that these guys are exact opposites in terms of their orientations. So one is R, the other is S. They're identical compounds except they're mirror images of each other. Okay, so hey, these guys are exact opposites. Put that in parentheses. And since they're exact opposites of one another, since they're reflections of each other, then they're going to have the exact same properties. Same properties. And beneath diastereomers, go ahead and write that these guys are the same at one or more places and different at one or more places. Okay, so diastereomers. These are the same at greater than or equal to one places 
and different at greater than or equal to one places. So they are the same at one or more places and different at one or more places, not either or. And this causes them to have different properties. Different properties. And the best way to show you what this means is by an example. So, hey, let me go ahead and put up a couple compounds here and we'll determine whether they are enantiomers, exact opposites, or diastereomers, compounds that are at the same at one place and different at another, all right? Okay, so for example, your professor can ask you something like this. Tell whether the following compounds are enantiomers, diastereomers, or identical compounds. And how you check for this is by locating the chiral centers in each compound, and then assigning R or S configurations to each. Okay, so hey, you should notice that there are two stereocenters in each one of these compounds. So there's one here, and another one here, and likewise there's one there, and one there. Remember, a chiral center is just a carbon with four different substituents on it. Okay, so the next thing you want to do after you find each chiral center is to assign stereochemistry to each one, whether each one's R or S. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. And you already know how to do this when we talked about assigning R or S configurations earlier. So hey, let's go through this pretty quick. All right, so for this chiral center, we've got a hydrogen, which is automatically going to be number four. Here we've got an oxygen and an oxygen. Let's compare their neighbors. This one has a carbon. This one only has a hydrogen. So this one will get priority number one. This one will get two, and by default, this carbon will get three. So if we take a look at these priorities, we've got one, two, three in a counterclockwise formation, and the lowest priority group is facing the back. So one, two, three, counterclockwise, and counterclockwise is S stereochemistry. S. All right, and let me go ahead and assign priorities to the second chiral center with a different color, okay? So, hey, we've got a hydrogen here. That's automatically number four. Chlorine, oxygen, and carbon. Chlorine is the highest, so he'll get number one. Oxygen is the next, he'll get number two. And this carbon will get number three. Okay, so when we look at this, we've got one, two, three in a counterclockwise formation again. The lowest priority group is facing the back, so one, two, three, counterclockwise. This one is also S. So what we're looking at here is a compound with two chiral centers, one here that's S and one here that's also S. Now let's do the same thing to the other compound that we're comparing it to. Okay, so for this compound, we have a chiral center here and one here. Let's assign stereochemistry to each, all right? So you've got a hydrogen here, which is gonna be number four. Here's an oxygen, here's an oxygen. This one has a carbon connected to it. This one only has a hydrogen. So this oxygen is gonna get priority number one. This one's number two, and this carbon number three. And you have this going one, two, three in a counterclockwise formation. But hey, the lowest priority group is facing the front this time. That means you assign the configuration just like normal. So one, two, three, it looks like it should be S, but since the lowest priority group is facing the front and not the back, then you're gonna flip this. So we're going to flip it from S to R. This stereocenter has R stereochemistry. And let's go ahead and assign R or S to this last stereocenter. So we've got a hydrogen here again. That's going to be automatically number four. Chlorine, oxygen, and carbon. Chlorine is the highest, so he'll get one. Oxygen, two. And this carbon is three. Okay, so we look at this, and it goes from one to two to three in a counterclockwise formation. The lowest priority group is facing the back, so one, two, three in a counterclockwise formation is gonna give us S at this stereocenter. 